This course will help you improve your skills with HTML and CSS. Popular instructor John Smilga will teach you how to create a multi-page recipe website using just HTML and CSS. Hey, what's up? It's John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another HTML and CSS project. And in today's video, we'll build a multi-page food recipe site. If you want to see the entire project in action, just navigate to the URL HTML CSS simply recipes dot netlify that app. Again, the URL is HTML CSS simply recipes dot netlify that app. And effectively, we've got a recipe site with a bunch of pages. So we've got a home page, an about page, the tags page. And then once we click on a tag, we navigate to a tag template page. We also have got recipes page as well as the contact page. And also, if we click on a single recipe, we'll have a single recipe page. Before we start setting up the project, let me just mention that since it's a HTML and CSS project, there's going to be very minimal functionality and some copy and pasting. Since in plain HTML, there are no templates or components. So for example, if you want to display nav bar in all pages, yes, you will have to copy and paste since there's no way around it. In order to follow along with the project, you'll need a star and probably the fastest way to get it is by navigating to johnsmilgo.com. Again, the URL is johnsmilgo.com and then look for the projects page and then filter by YouTube. So check for YouTube projects. And in here, if you click on this button, of course, you'll navigate to the project, the one that I just showed you, but you're looking for the star. So just click on the star or the source code. Both of them lead to the same repo. And once you get here, just look for download zip option. And once you download the zip, of course, you want to crack it open here. And then I'll just drag and drop and place it on desktop. I'll use my favorite text editor, Visual Studio Code. And I always prefer working side by side with a browser window. So I'll open up the browser. I'll set them side by side. And then we'll go over what you can find in the project. And essentially, we've got two folders. We've got a final one and the starter one. And of course, in the final is where you'll find the entire source code, just in case you ever need a reference. And the starter is where we'll be doing all of our work. In the starter, you'll find the general structure for the project. So I already prepared some stuff for you. Like we have assets, so this is where you'll find all the images, some CSS files that I'm going to talk about a little bit later, some empty HTML pages. So these are all the pages that eventually we'll create, as well as one lonely JavaScript file. And if you take a look at the index HTML, you'll find here the general setup where essentially we've got some link tags. So one is going to be for favicon. Then the next one will be for normalized CSS. We also have one for font awesome icons and one for main CSS. And if you take a look at the main CSS, you'll find some global styles that I use in all of my projects. If you're confused about some of this stuff, for example, why I use normalize and what is the benefit of global styles, please watch my default star video where I cover all of that in great detail. And you can find the video link in the description. Lastly, while working on HTML and CSS project, I prefer extension called preview on a web, which spins up the local web server. And as a result, once I save the file, I can see the changes instantly. So let me show you. So these are my extensions. And the one that I prefer using is this one, the preview on a web server. And of course, you just need to install it. And then if you want to see it in a browser, you can either right click it and I'll show you that in a second, or you can use this shortcut. So once you install the extension, just navigate to index HTML in the star. So of course, this is where we'll do the work. Now, if you want to check out the final, of course, navigate there. And then, like I said, we can right click over here and then choose this option, or you can just go for the shortcut. And I believe it was control shift and l and once you spin it up you should see a home page in a browser and like i said the reason why i prefer using this extension is because every time you make some kind of changes 
you'll right away see that in the browser. So if I go here with hello people, and once I save the file, check it out. Now, of course, I have the element displayed in the browser. And then lastly, once in a while, I want to showcase what we've got on a big screen as well. So therefore, I'll navigate here. And then I'll just copy and paste this URL. So essentially, I'll have two browsers, one is going to be the small one, where you'll see the result right away. And once in a while, I'll hop back to the big browser, just to showcase how something looks on a big screen as well. All right, and we're going to kick things off with a nav bar, which has two layouts. We have a small screen layout and a big screen layout. And on a small screen, we can also toggle the links. So let me make this smaller. And notice this is going to be a small screen layout where, of course, we can toggle the link. Now, I also probably forgot to tell you that when I'm recording, I actually zoom in. So that's why everything looks so big. Technically, if I go back to 100%. Now, of course, you'll see that everything is smaller. So don't be surprised if at some point your application looks a little bit different than mine. So let me make this big. And then I'm going to navigate back to the index HTML. Again, I'm using my web server I'm located in the star in the index HTML. And of course, as always, we just need to start by adding the HTML. And we're going to do that in the following way where of course, I'll remove all the code, all the dummy code. And I'll close the sidebar just so we have more real estate, say nav, and then let's add end of nav. That's just my preference. And then let's go with nav element also right away add a class of nav bar. And inside of the nav bar, I want to go with nav center div. And then inside of this div, we're going to have two more. One is going to be for nav links and one is going to be for nav header. So first, let's set up the header. And again, I'm going to use some comments here. So let's say nav header. So in here, we'll place a logo with the toggle button. And then also we'll have one for nav links. So of course, this is where all the links are going to be. Now, as far as nav center, why I prefer sticking it in a nav bar, because that way on a big screen, I can always make sure that the nav content is spanning only certain width. And of course, I'll show you once we start styling the big screen. Because notice, nav bar actually is going to be spanning all across. But then as far as the content, the nav center one, that will always be certain width. And that's why I have that nav center inside of the nav bar. Now, when it comes to header, we want to place two things over here. We have a link back to the home page. So basically, I'm wrapping my image in the link. So we can always navigate back home. And just to showcase how is that going to look like if I go to about page, that's the look. But if I want to navigate back, I can either click on home, or I can simply click on a logo, and I'll be back home. And then the second thing is the toggle button, which of course is going to have that font awesome icon. So let's start with a link as far as the href, we're going to go with index HTML. And of course, this is going to make sense. Once we add this nav bar to different pages, because of course, we already located in the index HTML, then we'll add a class of nav logo. And then inside of this link, let's go with IMG. And then all the images are going to be in the assets. And then more specifically, we have recipes one. So these ones we'll use a little bit later. But then for the about for the main one, as well as logo, well, they're just going to be located right in the assets folder. So let's set up the path. I'm going to go with forward slash I'm looking for assets. And as far as logo, well, we're just looking for logo SVG. And then let's add a alternative text. And we'll say here, simply recipes. Let's say that one, we should see the logo on the screen. And of course we do. And after that, let's set up that button. And this button is going to have two classes, it's going to have a class of BTN. So this is coming from the global styles as well as the nav BTN, because we'll add a little bit more styling. And also, you know, what? let's add a type. And let's say that is going to be equal to the button. Then inside of the button, like I said, we're going to go with font awesome icon. So we're looking for I element. And of course, I can access these classes, because I have the link to the font awesome. Notice over here. So that's the CDN link for the font awesome. And then as far as the classes, we're looking for FAS, and then FA and align and justify. So once I have my element, of course, I should see my icon. And since I do, we can move on to the next thing. 
So once we set up the header over here, then we want to add a comment of links. And as the name already suggests, in the nav links, we'll have a bunch of link elements. But one of them, the last one, contact one, is going to be wrapped in a div because it will have a little bit different styling. Notice on a big screen has different styling. And of course, also on a small screen. And because of that, of course, we'll wrap it in a div. So let's create four links. And we need to make sure that the values for the href actually match our pages. Otherwise, it's not going to make sense. And I'll start with index HTML. And as far as the text, I'm going to go with home. But we also want to add a class of nav link. And then I'm going to have one for about, one for tags, and one for recipes. And again, make sure that the href value actually matches the pages that we have over here. So let me toggle the sidebar. And then I'll copy and paste four times. And then as far as the values, I'm going to go with about HTML. Then I'm looking for tags HTML. And the last one will be recipes HTML. So recipes HTML, all of them have the class of nav link. So that stays the same. And now, of course, we just want to change these values around as far as the text ones. So let me select them. I'm going to look for home. I'll remove all of them. And then we'll go with about. Then we're looking for tags. And of course, the last one will be recipes. And like I already previously mentioned, when it comes to contact, yes, it's going to be a link. Yes, it's going to navigate to the contact page, but we'll wrap it in a div with two classes with the nav link class as well as the contact link class. So let's say here nav link and another class contact link. So contact hyphen and link. And then inside of this div, let's go with another href element and we'll say contact HTML. And then let's just add a class of button. And of course, as far as the text, we'll go with contact. And that should do it for the HTML. And as far as the logo I created in Figma, which is arguably the most popular web design software out there, it's very, it's very easy to get started. And you can easily find a bunch of great tutorials on how to get up and running with Figma on YouTube, as well as Udemy. And once the bones are in place, of course, now we can just start styling the nav bar. Nice. And once we have the HTML in place, now, of course, let's start styling. And first, we'll worry about the small screen layout. So first, I want to set this one up. And then we'll worry about the toggle effect. And only then we'll set up the big screen layout. And we're going to do that by navigating to main CSS. Again, it is located in the CSS folder, and more specifically main CSS. And then we have the navbar comment. So these are all the global styles. And then right after the navbar comment, we'll start styling. And let's just start with nav center. And eventually, there's also going to be some styles for the navbar. But for time being, they'll probably not going to make sense. So I'll just add selector for the entire navbar. And first, we'll start with nav center. And then you'll see what styles we want to add to the navbar as well. So let's start over here. And I just want to go with some kind of width. And since I want to set up this width fluid, meaning I want to set it based on a screen size, I'm going to go with width and then 90 view widths. So those are the units. And essentially, that just means 90% of the screen width, regardless whether that's really small or really big. And then as far as the max width, we're going to go over here. And then remember, I mentioned that I'm going to be using the CSS variable for that. And in my global styles, I have max width set to 1120 pixels. So that's the width I'm going to use. So let me go back. And in here, I'm just going to say half and hyphen, and then max width. And what this means is that our content in navbar is never going to be bigger than 1120. That's why we have the nav center. And that's why we added, of course, that max width. Now, you'll notice right now that, of course, the nav center is all the way on the left hand side. Why? Well, because we have the width, but we haven't set up the margin or we haven't styled the parent container. So we have two choices. Either you go here with margin zero and auto. So that will also always place it in the center. Or we can work with a parent container. And in this case, we'll just say display flex and then justify content. We'll set it in the center. And lastly, we'll go with align items and we'll set it equal to center. But I can tell you right away that we won't be able to see that. Why? Well, because navbar doesn't have any height. So 
So once we add the height and that is going to be on a big screen, then we'll actually see this property in action. And if you're ever in doubt, I highly suggest just adding the background. So in this case, let's say you're confused what's happening with nav center. Simply go with background and then set it equal to red. Again, this is just going to be temporary. And then you can do the same thing with the nav bar and change it around and set it equal to blue. And what you'll notice once you go to the big screen, so this is going to be that nav center. It's never going to be bigger than that 1120. And this is the remaining of the nav bar. Again, if you're ever in doubt, two options, either you can set up the border. That's also something that people use. Or you can just add the background colors. And that way you can clearly see, okay, so this is my nav center. And this is the remaining of the nav. And now, of course, since I have justified content center, you can clearly see that the nav center is sitting in the center of the nav bar. So now let me comment these ones out because they're useful, but they're also a little bit annoying because, of course, I don't want to look at the red color all the time. And up next, I want to go with header. So now, of course, we're styling where we have the logo as well as the button. And this is going to be the case where I'll set up the height and I'm going to go with six REMs. And what's really interesting is that once we get to the big screen, we'll change this height around and effectively we'll add the height to the entire nav bar. But for now, since we're just styling the small screen, we'll go with height six REMs for the header. And then again, we want to go with display flex and we'll go with justify content and we'll set it space between. And essentially in here, we're just pushing these items as far as possible away from each other. So notice now button is all the way on right hand side and the logo is all the way on the left hand side. And then I also want to set them up in the center vertically. And of course, in order to do that, we just go with align items and center. Of course, you can use the grid for that, but it's just always my preference to stick with flex. If you have these straight up horizontal and vertical layouts, of course, once it starts to get more complex, then grid is always a better choice. And after that, I want to make my logo a little bit smaller. So we'll go with a nav header, and then I'll target the image. And essentially, I just want to go with 200 pixels. So now you'll see that, of course, our logo is a little bit smaller. Then we want to go with nav button. As you can see, we already have a bunch of styles applied because we're using that global button class. But I just want to add a little bit different padding. So in here, let's go with nav BTN. And then I'm looking for padding 0.15. And of course, I'm going to go with REMs. And then the same thing is going to be over here, where we'll go with 0.75 REMs. Essentially, in here, just make this padding a little bit smaller and this one a little bit bigger. Of course, that is a choice. If you don't want that, you don't have to apply these styles. And then let's go for font awesome. And that one is, of course, the I element. So I'll go with nav BTN. And then I'll set the font size equal to 1.25. So 1.25 REMs. And once we have the nav button in place, then I just want to go for the links. So of course, now I'm talking about the entire list. And as far as the nav links, I'll set it equal to a display flex again. So display flex. And we're going to go with flex direction equal to a column. So now, of course, instead of being in one line, they're stacked one on top of each other. And then there's going to be more styles. So I'll add here to do, but we'll worry about them once we start actually toggling the links. And then we'll right away go for that one individual link. And that one has a class of nav link. And in here, let's go with display block. So we'll change from the inline one to your display block. Then we want to go for text align and we'll set it equal to center. So now, of course, all the text is in the center. Then let's also add text transform. And we're just going to go with capitalize. And after that, let's add a different color. And in this case, I'm going to go for the gray one, but I'm going to go for 900. So now, of course, all the links have the same color as our text. And then let's go for letter spacing. And that one will be equal to our CSS variable. Then we want to add a padding, but we'll only add padding top bottom. So padding one REMs and then left and right zero. And also I want to add a border on the top. So let's go border top one pixels solid. And then we're shooting for our CSS variable. So again, I'm going to go for gray and 500. 
So that's gonna be my border. And then I also want to add the transition because as we'll be hovering, I'll change the color of my link. So I'm gonna go over here with transition that is equal to my CSS variable, of course, in the global styles. And then let's just go with nav link and then hover. So as we're hovering, we want to change the color and we'll set it equal to the primary one. And then lastly, as far as this contact link, I just want to change the padding again, just like we did over here with the nav button. And in order to do that, we just go here with contact and then link. And I'm targeting the actual link element here. So I have the class and then I'm targeting the link. And in here, let's go with padding. And again, I'm going to go with 0.15 REMs and then one REMs left and right. And once we're done styling the contact link, we're almost almost done. But before I let you go, there's something that I want to point out. And that is simply the fact that if you take a look at the logo and button, you probably notice that even though I set up for the parent for the header to be align items in the center, the logo and the button are not vertically in the same line. Now, first of all, let's take a look at why is that happening? Well, remember, in the index HTML, we have, of course, a link, and then link wraps the image. So if we're going to go back, and again, I'm going to do that right after header, but it doesn't really matter where you do that. I'm going to go with nav logo, and let's do that trick. We'll go with background, and then let's add the red one. And you'll notice that, yes, these ones, so the link, not the logo, but the link is in one line with the button, but not the logo that is sitting inside of the link. And in order to fix that, we simply need to set our logo to be in display flex. And then in order to place the image in the center, we simply need to go with align items and then center. Again, please keep in mind, we're talking about the logo. So we're talking about the link. And then we set it up as display flex align items in the center. So now the actual image is in the center. And now, of course, you can clearly see that they're actually in one line. So now we want to remove the background red. We don't need it anymore. And once we fix this tiny bug, we're done styling the nav bar for the small screen layout. All right. It looks like we're done with initial nav bar CSS. But before we worry about styling the big screen layout, let's quickly knock out the toggle functionality. And as a side note, if you're not comfortable with JavaScript, you can simply copy and paste the code from the final directory. And the idea is following on a small screen, we want to hide all the links by default. And we'll do that by setting up the height zero in nav links. And in order to show them, we'll create a new class with the current height of the nav links. And lastly, in JavaScript, we'll toggle the nav links by adding and removing the show links class. So the end result should look something like this. Or if I make my screen size smaller, which notice we have the button. And once we click, we show the links. And once we click one more time, of course, then we hide the links. And like I already mentioned, the plan is following where we'll find the nav links. There it is. We have our to do. And before we do anything, before we set height zero, I actually want to check the height of the nav links. So let's open up the dev tools. We're looking for the elements. And more specifically, we're looking for nav links. And I can see that the height for nav links is 309.79 pixels. And once I know that info, I'll create a class. I'll say show links. And in there, we'll set up the height to be exactly that. Whatever we have right now for the nav links. And in my case, I'm going to go with 310 pixels. And once I have this height, now, of course, I want to go to the nav links. And like I said, by default, we'll hide them. So say here, height is equal to zero. Then we also need to set up the overflow hidden. Otherwise, you can clearly see that we can still see the links. So let's go over here, overflow hidden. And we also want to add the transition because when we'll be toggling, I actually want that toggle effect to happen over time, not instantly. So therefore, we'll go here with transition. And we'll just be looking for the CSS variable, the transition one. And once we have all of this in place, we can actually test it out by just adding and removing the class, the show links one in the DevTools. And then, of course, we'll navigate to the JavaScript file and add a functionality there as well. So let's go to the big screen. 
I always find it to be easier working there. So let's inspect. And of course, I'm looking for the nav links element over here and then just click on the class. And right next to the nav links, just go with show links. And what you'll notice the moment you press enter, of course, now we can see the links. And if I remove the class, then you can probably already guess that we won't be able to see the links. And effectively, the only thing we need to do right now is just navigate to the JavaScript file. So let's go to the directory, the JavaScript one. We're looking for app JS. And in here, we'll start with simple hello world. And then back in the index HTML, we want to set up the script tags. So let's say here script. And as far as the source, again, we're pointing to the JavaScript folder and then the app JS. And if you can see the hello world in a console, then of course, we're moving in the right direction. And as far as the app JS, you can select the nav links and nav button directly. But I always like to set up a function that gets me that element. And if the element doesn't exist, so essentially, if I get back the null, then I just throw the error. It might seem like an overkill on a small project, but I still decided to share the functionality. So in here, we want to go with const get element. And then we'll pass in the selector. So this is going to be either the nav links or nav button or whichever element you want to select. And then first, let's go with const element. So now we'll select it and we'll say document and then query selector. And now we pass in the selector. And you probably already know that in vanilla JS, if there is no element. So if I pass in some kind of selector that doesn't point to an element, of course, I'll get back the null. So I'll say here, if element exists, and only if it exists, then I'll return the element. Otherwise, I'll throw the error. And I'll just say throw and error. And of course, I'll pass in some kind of message. And in this case, I'm going to go with template string. I'll say, please double check your class names. And we'll go with there is no. And of course, now I'm looking for that selector. And let's add a class here. And once I have the function, of course, we can test it out where I'm going to go with const links. So now I'm selecting the nav links and we'll pass in the class of nav links. And if I don't see anything in the console, then of course we are in good shape. Now, if I'll add some class name that doesn't point to an element, then of course we'll have, please double check your class names. There is no blah, blah, blah class. Hopefully that is clear. So now, of course, we can set the proper class here, copy and paste. We're going to be looking for nav btn in this case. And of course, we also need to change the name here. So nav btn and then DOM. And then let's just add a event listener on a button, the click event. And then every time we click the button, we'll toggle the show links class. So we'll add and remove class on the links element. So let's say over here, nav btn, then add event listener. And then we'll be listening for click events. And of course, we need to pass in the callback function. And as far as the logic, we'll simply go with links, class list, and then toggle. So class list is the property. On there, we have toggle method. And in here, we just need to say which class we want to toggle. Keep in mind that in here, you don't need to pass in the dot. We already know that we're talking about the class, so you simply need to provide the class value. And the moment I save, I can see that I have no bugs in the console, which is always a good sign. And then, of course, notice as we're clicking, we're toggling the links. So if you want to test it out on a big screen, of course, you can do that. And you'll clearly see that the moment I click, I show links over here. Notice how we're, again, adding this class. Of course, in this case, we're not doing this manually. And then once we click one more time, then we hide the links. And before I let you go, let me just say that I'm fully aware that we are cheating a little bit, simply because if we change the amount of links, our functionality is not going to work as expected. Because keep in mind that back in the main CSS, we're actually hard coding this height value. So of course, as we're going to be adding more links, or removing the links, our functionality is not going to work as expected. And if you took my JavaScript course, you probably worked on a project where we covered the proper toggle functionality. But since it's not the main focus of the project, 
I decided to take this route instead. All right. And once we have the toggle functionality in place, I think I can close the app JS. And now, of course, we'll focus on a big screen layout. So essentially, that's the look that I'm shooting for. Once we get to the big screen, I want all of them in one line. Links are going to be on left hand side. And then the contact one is going to be all the way on right hand side. And in order to do that, we just need to come up with some kind of value for the media query. And in my case, I'm going to go for 992. Just keep in mind that, of course, I'm zoomed in. So technically, it's not going to happen exactly at 992. So let's go with media screen. And then we'll be looking for min width. So min width. And as far as the value, like I said, I'm going to go with 992. And the first thing that I want to do is hide the nav button. So let's just target the class nav btn. And we're going to go with display and none. So once we get to the big screen, I don't want to show the button. So of course, once we get past 992, notice we don't have the button. That's the first thing we want to accomplish. After that, we want to go with nav bar. And we want to set the height to be six REMs. If you remember on a small screen, the nav header was six REMs, correct? Now, in this case, that's not what I want. Therefore, I'll go with nav bar. And then we'll set height to be six REMs. And again, if you want to check it out, of course, add that background right there and you'll see how it's going to look like. Then we want to go with nav center and I want to set up display flex. Why? Because I want all of them in one line. Keep in mind that, of course, for the links, we'll still have to set them up as display flex as well. Otherwise, it's not going to work. There will still be flex direction column. But as far as nav center, yes. I want the header, I want the links in one line, therefore, we'll go here with nav center. And then we're looking for display. And of course, we'll set it equal to flex. Then we want to align them vertically in the center. So we'll go with align item center. After that, we have the nav header. And this is the case where, of course, we'll target that. We'll say nav header, I don't want the height to be six RMs. So let's just say here auto. So essentially, this is going to be the height of the actual content. And then let's go with margin and right. So this is just going to create a little bit of distance in between the links and nav header. So now if I navigate to the big screen, this is what you should see. Now, of course, we cannot see the links. And this is exactly what we're going to work on right now, where essentially we need to understand that if I take a look at the nav links, I set height to be equal to zero. So what happens if I hide the links on a small screen, which of course is exactly what I have right now, I'm not going to be able to see them on a big screen. So now notice, if I show the links on a small screen, I'll also see them on a big screen. Now, of course, the layout is still the mess. Don't worry about that. That's not what we focused on. What I want to showcase is that if we hide them on a small screen, we're not going to be able to see them on a big screen. Why? Well, because this height is set to zero. And in order to fix that, we simply need to target the class first, some nav links, and we want to go with height auto. And now you'll notice that even though the links are hidden on a small screen, once we get to the big screen, we set the height, and we can see the links. Now, of course, let's work on this layout because it is a mess. And I simply want to change my flex direction. And I want to set it equal to row. So now, of course, they will be in one line. Then I want to align them in the center vertically because I have the button and I have the links, just in case there are some differences there. And also, notice over here, the nav center is taking up all of this space. And then when it comes to header, it just has its own width, correct? And the same goes for the nav links. But I want to change that. Essentially, since nav center is taking up all of this space, I want my links to take up the remaining of the space. And the way we set that one up, we just go with width and we set it equal to 100%. And yes, at the moment, nothing changed over here. Don't worry. We'll work on that a little bit later. But now, if we take a look at the links, notice they're actually spanning all across. So I have my nav center. That is still display flex. And now the nav links are spanning all across. Again, if you want to test it out, just 
just go with background and red, and you'll see that of course now the links are taking up the remaining space. And if I remove that with hundred, then of course it's not the case. Now, of course, what I want is to style those nav links specifically. Because if you remember, there are quite a few styles coming from the small screen, and I actually want to override them. So I'll go with a nav link. So now I'm targeting that one specific link, and I'm going to go with padding zero since we added some padding on a small screen. Then we want to go with border top, and we'll set it equal to none. Then as far as the margins, since I want some distance in between. We're going to go with margin right, and we'll set it equal to one REMs. And as far as the font size, I'm going to go with one REMs. And then lastly, when it comes to that contact link, since I want to place it all the way on the right hand side, we'll simply go with margin left, and we'll set it equal to auto. And what you'll notice is that we have the header, we have the links, and of course, the contact link is all the way on the right hand side. And probably the biggest gotcha is that height zero, where essentially, again, on a small screen, we set it equal to height zero. So of course, once we get to the big screen, if we're hiding those links on a small screen, we need to show them and therefore we set height equal to auto. And with this in place, we're done styling the nav bar. So now, of course, we can move on to our next task. All right. And once we're done with the nav bar, let's set up a structure for all our pages. Now, before we do that, though, let me just quickly mention that if you're bothered with the small margin on a contact one, you can simply go back and then add here margin. And of course, we're looking for margin right in this case, and we can set it equal to zero because of course, all the links get this margin right. So if we remove it, then of course, we'll not have that space all the way on the right hand side. And as far as the structure, we want to set up the page class. And then we also want to set up the footer. So this is going to be a structure for all the pages. And then in different pages, of course, we'll add different content, but all of them will have the nav bar, we'll have the footer, as well as the page. And you'll see once we get there. So first, let's go back to index HTML. And then right after the nav, we have end of nav. And let's just say here main or page or whatever. So some kind of comment, copy and paste, and we'll say end of main. And now let's set up a main element. And let's add a class of page. And then after the main one, this is where we want to set up a footer. So let me go here with footer. And then I'm going to go with footer element. And as far as the class, since there might be a footer also in some kind of card or something like that, I always prefer setting it up explicitly as page footer. But of course, this is the preference. Technically, you can just select the footer in the CSS, and you'll still be in good shape. And as far as footer, I want to go with paragraph here. So then we'll go with special HTML character. So I'm going to go here with ampersand, and then we'll say copy. So of course, now we'll get that copyright sign. And then I just want to set up the date. Now, for time being, we'll hard code that. And then later on in the video, We'll actually set up the JavaScript code as well. So let's go here with ID and date. So that's what we'll use in JavaScript. And like I said, for now, we'll just hard code. We'll say 2021. And then right next to the span, we'll set up another one. So still within the same paragraph, we'll go with second span. And here, let's add a class and we'll say footer logo, footer logo. And then let's just write whatever is the logo of the site. So in my case, it is simply recipes. But of course, you can add different logos as well. And then right outside of the span, but still within the paragraph, we'll go with built by and I'm just going to use a shameless plug. And I'll set up a link back to johnsmilk.com. So we'll go with href. Then I want to go to the big screen. And I'm going to be looking for johnsmilk.com. I'm going to grab the href, copy and paste. And of course, now I have a link. And let's just type over here, coding addict. So that should do it for the HTML part, for the structure for all the pages. Now, of course, we just want to swing back to the main CSS. And I'll grab this comment one, and then copy and paste. And we'll set up one for footer as well. So let me copy this one, copy and paste. And then let's set up one for footer. 
And you know, what? I'm actually going to copy paste one more time. That way I can set up the next comment as well. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to leave it blank. Now we'll actually start with a footer and only then we'll worry about the page. And you'll see in a second why. For the time being, what we can do on a page is just set up our famous background red. Since that way, we'll clearly see what we're styling. And let's just start by targeting the page footer. So let's say here page footer. And I want to go with height equals to four RMs. So add some kind of height. Then we'll also go with text align center. So now all of the text is going to be in the center. Then we want to add background. And let's go with CSS variable. So in this case, I'm looking for the value of black. And then, of course, we also want to add some kind of color. So in this case, we'll go with color. And we're looking for the white one. So now, of course, all of the text is white apart from the link. But I'm noticing here that, of course, I have the height, but I'm not placing the content in the center. So actually, a better approach is removing this text line center. And we'll go with display. And we'll set it equal to flex. And then let's align them in the center vertically. And also justify content, which of course is going to do that horizontally. So both justify content as well as the align items are set to center. Now we still have some default margins and therefore we'll target the footer and more specifically paragraph. And we'll say margin bottom is equal to zero. And once we have that, I just want to add colors to the link as well as the logo. And in order to accomplish that, we simply go with footer logo, then comma, and then we'll go with page footer, and then link. And now, of course, I want to go with color, and we'll be looking for the primary one. So once we set it up, of course, now the logo, as well as the link, have this primary color. And if I take a look at the complete project, that's what I'm shooting for. Now, the next thing that I want to do is set up the page height. Because if you notice at the moment, of course, yes, we do have the navbar, we have the footer, but I actually want the page to take up the remaining space. And how we can do that? Well, we can use min height. And we'll use the calc function because both the navbar as well as the footer have some kind of height. And first, let's start with some kind of width. So in here, let's say background red, and we'll go with width. And width always will be. 90% of the screen size. So that's why we have view with units. And of course, I also want to set up some kind of max width, and this will be equal to my CSS variable. So let's go over here with max width. And eventually, what you'll notice is that the content of the page is going to be aligned exactly like the nav bar. Because if you remember, we also use the max width in the nav center. So that's why both of them will be in one line. Now, of course, we have no content, so you cannot see that yet. But trust me, eventually, it's going to be there. Then we want to go with margin zero and auto. So now we'll always place it in the center. And then I also want to add a little bit of padding on the top. So we'll say here, padding top, and let's just go with two REMs. Now, of course, you can clearly see our red box, which essentially is going to be our page. And lastly, what we want is set up that min height. So for all the pages, there's always going to be this min height. And I want this to be 100%. But I want to subtract the height of the navbar, as well as the height of the footer. So we can do that by setting up min height, then we'll go with calc function. And let's just go with 100 view heights. So this is going to be 100% of the screen minus and then of course, we want to add six REMs plus the four REMs. And what you'll notice that regardless of the screen size, this is going to take at least 100% of the height. Now, of course, if we'll add more content, it's going to be bigger. And you'll see that in later pages, but at least minimum, it's going to be 100% minus the nav bar as well as the footer. And then before we add that to all the pages, I actually want to go to the app.js. I want to target the date element. And I just want to showcase how we can add this dynamically. So for time being, let's just remove this code. Essentially, let's just remove the current year because we're not going to be hard coding that. And I want to swing back to app.js. And in here, right after the nav button, 
we'll go with const date. So now we're selecting get element. And of course, I'm looking for that ID. I'm going to say date. And in here, we'll just go with const current year. And if you want a current year in JavaScript, we just simply go with new date. We invoke it and we have a function by the name of get full year. So now, of course, we just need to go with date. So that's the element, then text content, and that is equal to the current year. So this way, we'll always have the current year. We won't have to hard code this. And then lastly, once we have this structure, I actually want to take it, copy and paste and set it up in all the pages. And before you get mad about it, before you get mad about the fact that we still need to copy and paste in all the pages, let me just say one more time, since we're just using straight up HTML and CSS, we don't, we don't have any concept of templates or components that we have in react. So yes, if we have multiple pages, there's really no other way. And of course, once we set up structure for all the pages, then we'll worry about index HTML. And then one by one, we'll add code, meaning the HTML and CSS to the rest of the pages. So once you have the structure, since we'll use it in all the pages, and since we have all the correct links, whether that is for CSS or for JavaScript, I want to take all of this. And then one by one, I want to add it to all the pages. Because in here, yes, we have some boilerplate code, but essentially what we want is just select everything and then overwrite with our current code that is coming from the index HTML. And of course, the only thing you need to do over here is just change the title. And since this is 404 page, since this is an error page, I'm going to go here with error. And if you want to add more text, of course, you can do that. But in my case, I won't. And then just so I can understand what is happening, where I have the page, I'll also add a heading one, and I'll say error page. And again, we need to do that for all the pages. We want to do that for about contact recipes, single recipe, tag template, and tags. And of course, I'll stop the video because I don't think it's very useful for you to watch how I do to all the pages. But I strongly suggest you do the same because that way it's going to be easier later on when we set up the pages. And once you copy and paste our page structure, your website should look something like this, where in all the pages, you'll have the nav bar, you'll have the footer, you'll also have the page with a heading one with the name of the page. And of course, a title that matches wherever is the file name over here. And essentially from the nav bar, you should be able to navigate to all the pages as well as the 404. So the 404, of course, is the one where we need to go to the URL. And let's just say 404 HTML. And effectively, this is an error page. If the user is looking for some kind of resource on a server that doesn't exist. And just to showcase how is that going to look like in the actual dynamic application, let me just find here Gatsby version three. So this is the original project. Notice if I'm looking for some kind of page that doesn't exist, let's say users page, we'll see this 404. So that's the one that we'll set up here in the error page. And with all of this in place, now, of course, we can keep working on a project. And up next, I actually want to work on a home page where we have this banner. All right. And once we have all the structure in place, now, of course, let's worry about our hero. And essentially what I want is some kind of div with a background and for that background, we'll use the image and then we'll also place a text in the center. And as far as the HTML, we want to go to index HTML. So of course, this is going to be our home page. And then inside of the main, let's just add here a comment. Let's say that we're going to be looking for the header element here. And then let's go with the actual header element with a class of hero. And inside of it, we're going to go with hero container and hero text. And you'll see in the CSS why we have this nested structure. So let's go with hero container. And then inside of that hero container, we're going to go with hero text. And then in there, we'll place the heading one with some kind of text. Again, in my case, it's going to be simply recipes. And then right below it, we'll go with a subtitle. And that one will be no fluff. 
no fluff, just recipes. And once we have the HTML in place, now, of course, we want to navigate to main CSS. Let's open up the main CSS here. We have already a comment. So let's just say here, hero, I guess. And before we do anything, maybe let's just copy and paste. So we don't worry about the next one. So copy and paste. And then let's just say here, hero. And in here, I just want to set up some kind of height for my hero. And I guess I'm going to go with height of 40 view heights. Essentially, I'm going to 40% of the screen. So let's go with height. And once we have that, let's add that background. So let's go over here with background URL, and we'll be looking for the image. And in this case, I'm looking in the assets, and we'll go with main JPEG. But of course, we want to place it in the center. We want to make sure it covers everything. And also that there's no repetition. Of course, we can do it long way. But there's also a shortcut where we go to center cover. And then we set it equal to no repeat. So once we do that, of course, we should see the image. Now, what I want is to add a border radius. So I want rounded edges. And I also want to add a little bit of margin in the bottom. So let's go here with margin bottom. And I'll set it equal to two REMs. And also, I want to add that border radius. So let's just go with border radius and set it equal to our border radius global property. Now, in order to set up the look where I have a text right in the center, and as you notice here, the background is actually a little bit darker. So there is some kind of overlay on the image. We'll actually set this one as position relative, position relative, and then the hero center. So this enclosing div, this is where we'll set up position absolute. And then we'll use display flex to place a text in the center. So let's keep scrolling. And we're going to go with hero container. And like I said, we're going to go with position absolute. And since the parent is position relative, now, of course, we're setting up everything based on a parent. And then in here, I just want to have a width of 100%, height of 100%. And then let's just set up top and left to be equal to zero. So top and left both are equal to zero. And once we have all of this in place, now, of course, let's add that overlay. And we do that by going with background. And then we're looking for RGBA. And I'm just going to go with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.4. So RGBA, now this gives me 0 0.04. That's not what I want. So essentially, notice how the background right now is darker. So we added the overlay on top of the image. And of course, if we go really dark, then of course, it's going to be hard to see the image. So therefore, I go here with RGBA. And as a result, I can nicely control this color. So the darker you'll go here, of course, the darker the overlay is going to be. And the reason why we want to set that up is because if we don't do that, then of course, with white text, it's going to be hard to see the text. That's why we want to set up the image, we want to add the overlay, and we want to add some dark color to it. And then we'll make the text white. So right after the background, we can probably go with border radius, since at the moment, our image has the border radius but not the container. So let's go with border radius and we'll set it equal to the border radius property. And then if I want to place the text in the center, we want to go with display flex, align item center. So that's going to be for vertical and justify content is going to be for horizontal center. And then we want to target the hero text. So that's going to be a div inside of that container. So hero text. And let's just set up text align center because you notice even though the hero text is in the center, the actual text inside of it is not. Therefore, we go text align and we set it equal to center. So now, of course, everything is in the center. And let's also add that white color. So let's go with our CSS variable. And of course, the name is white. And then the very last thing that I want to add is the media query for 768 pixels. And once we get to that screen size, I want to make the font size for heading one four REMs and set the margin bottom to be equal to zero. So in here, let's go with media screen. And of course, we're looking for some kind of value. In this case, I'm going to go with and min width. 
and 768 pixels. And once we get to the screen size, like I said, we're going to go with hero text and heading one. And let's just go with font size for REMs. And then let's set up the margin bottom to be equal to zero. And once we have everything in place, let's navigate here. And this is going to be the look on a big screen. And if we make this smaller, of course, this is going to be the look on a small screen. Now, as always, I'm massively zoomed in. So technically, if you take a look at the small screen, it's going to look something like this. And once we have our hero in place, now, of course, we can focus on our recipes where we'll have two column layout on one side. We'll have the tags. And then on the other side, we'll have the cards. Beautiful. And with our hero out of the way, now let's tackle the big beast, the recipes layout, where we've got a two column layout with tags in one column and cards in the other. Now, since we'll reuse this layout in multiple pages, please take your time and don't rush with this one. Better to take more time right now than chase some silly spelling errors later. And from my part, I'll probably be even more annoying than usual by repeating the same things over and over. Since in here we have the nested layout, so it can get tricky. And therefore, I think it's important that I basically keep repeating the same things. And we'll also split this one into multiple videos, just so we can build everything step by step. The good news, once we're done with the recipes, it's pretty much smooth sailing from here on out. And effectively, we want to go back to the index HTML. Of course, we're looking for the main and you want to place this one in the main. So not outside of the main, not inside of the footer. You still want to place it in the main and therefore I'll add a bunch of comments here as well. Again, we will reuse this one. So it's much easier if you have clear comments where the next section starts or the element and hopefully you get the gist. So let's go here with end of header and then we'll add another set of comments and let's just go with a recipes container container and we'll do it over here as well and let's just say end of end of a recipes container and then we're going to go with section with the class of recipes container so section recipes container and inside of the container we'll have two major things we'll have a tags container so i'm talking about this column over here so these are going to be our tags and then we'll have recipes cards and of course there's going to be more content but for now let's just set up those main elements and again we'll place a bunch of comments let's say tag container and then we'll copy and paste of course and here we'll say end of tag container and as far as the tags well we'll just go with div with a class of tags container so if you want maybe let's add an s here as well just so it makes a little bit more sense. And then we have a recipes list. So these are going to be those cards. And in this case, I think I can just copy and paste. And we'll just change things around where I want to select all the tags here. And let's say a recipes. And instead of container, this is going to be a list. So let's say here list. So that's going to be the structure for this container. So we have recipes container then tags container where we'll have the tags and here of course we'll have the cards the recipe cards and now one by one let's add more content and as far as the recipes container we're gonna have a heading four with the text of recipes and then we'll also have a div with a class of tags list and essentially in here i'm just gonna have links now since again this is a html and css project We'll simply navigate to the page, to the tag template page, and we'll display these recipes. When you're talking about the dynamic project, the one that we set up in Gatsby, of course, in here, we navigate to the tag. Of course, we display that one specific or multiple recipes that are associated with that tag. Keep in mind that in this case, of course, it's not going to be dynamic. We'll just have one page and we'll navigate there and content will always be the same. But when it comes to dynamic project, of course, you click on a tag and then you only display the recipes that are associated with that tag. And hopefully you can already see that when it comes to layout, it resembles a lot to what we have here. 
in recipes list. So this is what I'm talking about, where we will reuse this layout and some parts of this layout quite heavily around the project. So let's make sure that we set up everything correctly. So back in the index HTML, I have tags container, I have heading four, and in here I want to go with tags list. And essentially, these are just going to be links to the tag template page. Again, they're not going to be dynamic. All of them will point to the same page. And essentially, in there, we'll just have static content. And as far as the href, we want to go with tag template HTML. And here, let's just add some different values. So I'm going to go with beef, and I'll say one. So what I'm trying to say here is that there's one recipe that has the tag of beef. And of course, we'll just copy and paste and change these values around. So for breakfast, we'll go with two. Then for carrots, we'll go with three. Carrots will go with three. And in here, of course, we'll have the generic one, the food one, which is four. And again, not to be redundant, but in a normal project, of course, this is coming from the database. So this info is coming from database and it changes. It is dynamic. The more items you add, of course, you'll display different info in here, just HTML and CSS project. So of course, we're just hard coding. And when it comes to recipes list, we want to set up those cards. So we're done with tags container, it should look something like this. And then back in the recipes list, we want to set another comment, and we'll go with single recipe. So this is going to be that card. And we'll copy and paste. So we'll say and of single recipe. And in here, I want to go with link. Now this link is going to go to single recipe page. And essentially, this page probably is going to be the last we set up because there's also quite a bit of work over there. But the idea is that this goes to the tag page. But then this one goes to that single recipe, whatever it is. Again, in our case, it's going to be hard coded. So if you take a look, it's all the time display the same info here. But in general, when you have dynamic project, of course, you display different recipe. Hopefully that is clear. And as far as the href, we'll go with single recipe HTML. And we'll right away add a class here of a recipe. And then inside of it, we want to go with image. And as far as the source, well, it's going to be in the assets. And we'll start with recipe one, then two, and I believe we'll have four. So you can already guess that, of course, in the assets, we have a recipes folder. And in there I have recipe one, recipe two, three, and four. So let's start with the first one. So again, we have here a image tag. Now let me close the sidebar. And we're going to be looking in the assets, and then more specifically recipes. And then in there we have recipe one JPEG. Now as far as the alternative, let's just say food. And then I also want to right away add classes. So we'll have the generic IMG class. Remember that was set in global styles, as well as a recipe IMG. So that's the class I want to add. And then right after my image, and uh, let me close this one. And right after my image, let me go with heading five. And I'm going to go with some kind of text. And uh, let me just see. So I'm going to go with this one. And then I'm also going to go with prep time and cook time. So I'm going to set up a paragraph with a text of prep. And again, in this case, we're hard coding, of course, and we're going to go with 15 minutes, then a vertical bar. And of course, we'll go with cook. And this is going to be equal to five minutes. Let me save it. Let me take a look. That should be the look on a big page. Okay, looks about right. And now we simply want to copy and paste this one and just change the heading five. So I'll leave the paragraph exactly the same. But since I'm going to be changing the pictures, I'll also change the text over here. And if you want to see the final text, just navigate to complete project. And of course, this is what we're shooting for. So these are the titles of our recipes. So let me just take here where I have the starting comment and select everything including the ending comment. And now, of course, we want to copy and paste three times. So one, two, and three. And now the only thing left to do is to scroll up. Okay, that's our first recipe. And then we'll look for the next one. And we'll just change the image. So now, of course, this is going to be 
recipe number two. And as far as the text, these are going to be Greek ribs, ribs. And let me just save it so I can see that. Yep, that looks about right. Then we have vegetable soup, and that is going to be recipe number three. And of course, I'll change the text here as well. And the last one will be banana pancakes. And of course, we want to change the image as well. So in this case, we're looking for recipe number four. So if I take a look at the big screen, it should look something like this. Where of course, we have the recipes. So these are going to be our tags. And then we have those four recipe cards. Wonderful. We're actually done with HTML. So now let's navigate to main CSS. And of course, let's set up the styles. And like always, we'll start with the small screen, of course. And then we'll worry about the big screen layout. I have my comment here. So let me copy and paste. And here I'll just write recipes. And then in order to help us, I'll add some borders again, just so we have understanding of what's happening. So in here, let's go with recipes container. So that's going to be that main container. And here we'll go with display grid. And if you remember, by default, it's going to be a one column layout. So that's exactly what I want on a small screen. But eventually, keep in mind that this is going to be a two column layout, correct? So we might as well set up the gap right now for both four rows, as well as the columns. Again, I'm talking about the parent container, where I have the recipes and the cards. And therefore, I'll go with gap here. And I'll say two REMs. And we'll set it up as one REM. Again, at the moment, we'll only use one, because we have one column layout. But then eventually, once we have two columns, essentially, once we set up the media query, of course, then we'll use both of the values. Hopefully that is clear. And like I said, in order to help us, let's just go with two pixels, solid and red, just so you can see what's happening. So that's going to be my main container. Then we want to go with tags container. Again, that is for the tags, so tags container. And essentially, we want to set up right away border just so we can see what is happening. So what we're styling. And in this case, I'm going to go with blue. And once I save, I should see over here that that is my tags container. And as far as the styles, I actually want to place it all the way in the bottom. So I want to change the order. Notice over here in the index HTML, what do I have first? Of course, I have the tags, correct? I have my tag container. And only then I have the recipes list. And as I note, let me just change this one as well. So it's not going to be a recipes container, we'll go with recipes list. So end of recipes list, just so we have a little bit more clarity. And then what I'm trying to do on a small screen is to actually change the order. So notice here, I have the hero first, and then I have the cards. And all the way in the bottom, I have the recipes. I mean, it's not a big deal, you can technically keep it at the top, but it's actually my preference to change the order. And if you remember, by default, all of them have order of zero. So if you'll add order of one, you'll notice that the recipes are going to be all the way in the bottom. So essentially, we have the recipes list still with order of zero. And we just change the order over here. Now, of course, once we get to the big screen, we'll change it back again. But that's a different scenario. So then we want to go with display flex and flex direction column. Now again, keep in mind that I'm talking about the parent container for the heading four, as well as the links. So for both of them. Now when it comes to links, there's going to be another nested layout, but we'll worry about that one a little bit later. So let's just say here display flex, then we want to go with flex direction. And we're going to be looking for the column. And eventually we want to set up the padding in the bottom as well. And we'll set it equal to three REMs. So it should look something like this. Then we want to go with a recipes list, and then we'll swing back to the tags. So let's go over here with a recipes list. And again, by default, this is going to be a one column layout. And we'll do that just by setting up display grid. And then we'll right away set up the gap of two REMs and one REM. And again, this is going to be the same as with the main container, where since we have one column layout, of course, we're not at the moment using both values. But how the recipe list eventually is going to look like? Well, it's going to be a three column layout, correct? So therefore, I right away add that gap property 
with both of the values. And also, I want to do the same thing where I'll add the padding bottom equal to three REMs. Then we want to swing back to the tags. So I set up pretty much the major styles for a recipes list. Now I want to worry about the tags. And first, let me scroll down just so I can see what's happening. And we're going to go with tags container. Then we're looking for heading four, of course. And we'll add a little bit of margin in the bottom. So we'll say here, 0 0.5 REMs. And then as far as the font weight, let's just change it around. And let's set it equal to 500. After that, I want to go with entire list. Of course, I'm talking about the actual tags list. And I'll make the screen size bigger just because I have zoomed in. Otherwise, it's going to look funky. And we're going to go with tags list. And in here, we want to go with a display grid and we'll right away set it up as a three column layout. So let's say grid template columns. And we're looking for one fraction, one fraction, and one fraction. Again, keep in mind that, of course, this is going to be a small screen layout. Once we get to the big screen, of course, we'll set it back to one column layout. Then we want to style the actual link. So let's say over here, tags list. And of course, I'm looking for the link element. As far as the text transformation, we'll capitalize it. Then we want to set them up as display block. And after that, we want to set up the color. And I'm going to go with my gray 500 here. And also, I'll add transition because there's going to be a hover effect. So transition. And then as far as hovering, let me just speed this up by copying. And then I'll say hover. And as we're hovering, I'm just going to change it to primary. So again, copy and paste the color. And instead of gray, let's go with primary. Once we save, we should see that as we're hovering, Notice, of course, we're changing the color of the link. Then we want to go and style the recipe. Now, what is the recipe? Well, that is going to be our card. So we're pretty much done with a tags, of course, apart from the big screen. And therefore, I'll still leave those borders. I'll remove them at the very, very end. And you know what? Actually, let me look for the recipes list. And let me add the border here as well because I think it's going to be very helpful later. So let's say here green, let's save that one. And yep, of course, we can see where we have our columns. And like I said, we're going to target the recipe. So that's going to be the entire card recipe here. And remember, it was a link. So we'll start with display block. And then once we set this up, now, of course, I want to target the image. So each card has the image. So let's target it. Let's say a recipe. And I believe the class for the image was a recipe IMG. And I'll set up the height and I'll go with 15 REMs like so. Then I'll add right away a border radius. And we'll look for our CSS variable for that, of course. So border radius. And as far as the margin, well, let's just set up margin bottom one REMs. We save that one. And then we want to go with a recipe and heading five. So, of course, going to be the title. And also I want to style the paragraph. And then we're pretty much done with a small screen. So let's go over here. Let's say a recipe and heading five, like I said, and we're looking for margin bottom zero. Then I want to make the line height smaller. So I'll go with one. If you remember in global styles, of course, by default, it was bigger. And then as far as the color, let's go with color. And we're going to go with gray 700. So it's not going to be as dark as the rest of our text, it's going to be a little bit lighter. And then also we have one for the paragraph. So let's say here recipe paragraph. And basically what we're looking for is margin bottom to be zero because there is some margin as a default. And then the same thing line height will be equal to one. And that's usually the case when I'm dealing with some kind of cards because you don't want those massive line heights. Then let's also add right away margin top to be 0.5 REMs, just so we get a little bit of space. As far as the color, I'm going to go with gray, but I'm looking for 500. So I'll just copy this one, just so we can save a little bit of time. And then I also want to set up the letter spacing. So letter spacing, and we're looking for the CSS variable. And there it is. And with this in place, we're actually done styling the small screen layout. And now, of course, we just need to focus on multiple media queries. Wonderful. Our small screen looks pretty good, apart from those borders. 
which of course we'll remove a little bit later. So now let's focus on the multiple screen sizes. And of course, we'll do that setting up the media queries. So let me go here with media screen. And I believe we'll have three of them. So I'll right away set them up. And then we'll just worry about the code inside of them. So let's just go with 576 pixels. And then we want to copy and paste this one two times. And then as far as the values, one is going to be for 992. And then the last one will be for 1200 pixels. So we set this one up. And then inside of the first one, we want to go with recipes list. So this is the actual list where we have the cards. Keep that in mind. I'm not talking about the container. I'm talking about the recipes list where we have the cards. And I want to set it up as two column layout. So let's go over here with recipes list. And then we want to go with grid template columns. And we'll set it up as one fraction and one fraction. Now, keep in mind that if we scroll up and if we take a look at the recipes list, it is already a display grid, correct? So therefore, I can right away set up that column layout. And I also like to set up my images a little bit smaller once they're side by side. So on a small screen, I mean, 15 REMs is pretty good, but once actually the screen size gets a little bit bigger, meaning starting with 576. And once I have the two column layout, actually it makes a little bit more sense to go with a recipe and then IMG, at least in my opinion. Of course, you don't have to, but at least in my opinion, I always go with 10 REMs. Basically, I set them smaller, maybe sometimes it's bigger than 10 REMs, and hopefully you get the gist. So now let me navigate here to the big screen just to showcase what's happening. So I'll make this one on over here. So this is going to be our one column layout. And then once we get to the 576, of course, this is going to be the look. So now we have that two column layout. Hopefully that is clear. And now we can focus on 992. Now at 992, we'll actually change the layout for the entire container where we have the tags as well as this recipes list. And the way we'll do that, of course, we'll look for our media query. That's step number one. And we're looking for recipes and container. Now, again, it is already display grid, correct? Starting with the small screen. So the only thing we really need to do is come up with values for the columns. And in my case, I went with 200 pixels. So that's for the tags. That's the width of my first column. And then one fraction, basically, to take up the remaining space for the recipes list. And as far as the recipes list, well, I have already a grid template column set to one fraction, one fraction. So I don't need to worry about that. The only thing that I want to set up here, and maybe I'll style the paragraph a little bit differently as well. But as far as the tags container, I want to go with order and zero. Remember, on a small screen, what was the order? It was one. And what was the result? Well, the result was that tags are all the way in the bottom, correct? So they're after the recipes list. Now, of course, once we get to 992, I want this look. I want actually both of them side by side like this. So I need to place it back where it belongs. And of course, I can do that with order of zero. So let's go with tags and then a list. Let's set up or I'm sorry, not tags list. My bad. So tags container first and we'll go with order and of course it's going to be zero and then as far as the tags list of course we have three column layout on a small screen but is that something we want over here of course no we want one column layout because now of course they will be side by side now how we can achieve that all well, we can go to tags list and remember it is already display grid it already has the column layouts we simply need to change it we need to go with grid template columns and set it up as one fraction. And lastly, as far as the recipe, I actually want to go with paragraph font size to be 0.85 REMs. So you can place it at the very end or after the recipe, it doesn't really matter. We'll go with recipe paragraph. And let's just go with font size. And like I said, we're going to be looking for 0.5 REMs. Let's save it. And let's take a look. And we can clearly see that this is our main container with a red border. And then, of course, I have blue border for the recipes, meaning for the tags, I'm sorry. 
and then the green one for recipes. And as you can see, once we have a smaller screen, then of course we have this layout. And once we get over here, beautiful. Now we have two column layout. And lastly, once we get to 1200 pixels, the only thing I really want to do here is make the recipes list a three column layout. So let me swing back and we'll keep on scrolling. And of course, at 1200 pixels, we'll set up our recipes list to be a grid template columns. And of course, I'm looking for three column layouts. So I'm going to go with one fraction, one fraction and one fraction. And yes, I'm fully aware that, of course, we can write the repeat and all that. But in this case, I just thought that it's going to be quicker if I go with one fraction. And then as far as the font size for the heading five, I want to set it up to be 1.15 REMs. So I'm looking for a recipe. And since I already have for the paragraph, I might as well copy and paste. And essentially, we want to go with heading five here. I believe it was heading five. And then we'll go with one point, one point fifteen REMs. Let's save that one. And I need to navigate back to the home page here. And now let's take a look at our big screen layout. So essentially, once our screen gets bigger, 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 then of course, we arrive at the three column layout. Again, this is going to be the look on a small screen where we have recipes list first, then we have the tags. Then once we get to the 576, we have two column layout for the recipes list. Then once we get to 992, we have two column layout for the entire container. And we still have these two columns over here for the recipes list. And then once we get to the big screen, voila, of course, now we have two column layout. And here we have three column layout. So now, of course, the only thing really left is to remove those borders. So we have recipes list, we have tags container, and of course, we have the recipes container. And with this in place, we have tackled the big beast. Congratulations. And now, of course, we can move on to our next step. Not bad, not bad. Essentially, we're done with our home page. So now let's knock out the other pages as well. We'll start with an easy ones first, like error and recipes and eventually work on more complex ones as well. And in this video, I want to complete three pages, error page, recipes page, and tag template page. Let's start with an error. And I know I already said this before, but essentially the 404, the error page is if the server cannot find the resource. And in the Gatsby project, it's going to look something like this, where again, we go with a domain and then we say error. And of course, that's going to spit back the error page. And actually, if you deploy this project, the simple recipes one, it's going to work the same way. So even the HTML and CSS one on Netlify, if you're looking for some kind of page that doesn't exist, since we have the 404, of course, we'll get back this result. Now, in our local development, that's not going to happen because the extension is not that smart. So in order to see the page, of course, we'll have to do that manually. And the way we're going to do that in the project is following way. We're first on a big screen. Let's just type 404 HTML. Okay, looks about right. And then we want to do the same thing. So let me grab the URL and just copy and paste and set it up on a small screen as well. So let me select everything. And then I'm looking for 404. So this is how it's going to look like. Now, when it comes to actual code, of course, we want to navigate to 404 HTML. Of course, this is going to be our basic structure for all the pages. And for the error page, we simply want to add one more class here, since we'll add a little bit more styles. And let's say here error and hyphen page. And then as far as the content, we'll go over here with section. And then inside of the section, let's go with heading one. And let's say error. And then lastly, let's go with heading three. And we'll say page not and found. So we save it over here. And now, of course, we just want to go back to main CSS. Again, we're looking for our comment. We want to make sure that we have it for the next one. And in here, I'll just say error. And as far as the code, essentially what we're looking for is that class of error page. Error page. And we'll go with text align. Text align and center. like So and of course, we also want to add a little bit of padding to the top. 
and that one will be equal to five REMs. And when it comes to a heading one, let's just go with error page and heading one, and let's go with font size and nine REMs. And you know what? I messed up a little bit. We're in the 404. We actually want to go with 404, the numbers, not the text of error. And of course, we have our error page. And once that is done, let me just navigate back. And in this case, we're looking for recipes page again in the nav bar. Look for a recipes page, and the same is going to be on a big screen where we want to go to the recipes page. And what's really cool, we already have all the code for it. And you know where we'll get the code over here. Take a look at the project. So, this is our home page, correct? We have the hero as well as the recipes layout. Now, what do you think is going to be in recipes? Well, it's going to be pretty much the same page without the hero. And again, this is the case where, of course, normally this is some kind of template or this is a component where you just pass in the data. So, you don't have to repeat yourself. But like I have already said a million times, since we're working with just HTML and CSS, yes, we'll have to copy and paste. And now, of course, let me go back to my project. And I'm looking for the index HTML. And this is the reason why I added so many comments over here, because we definitely don't want to mess this up. So we have main over here, correct, with a class of page. Then we have the hero, so we can actually collapse this one. And what we're looking for is this entire container. Now there's going to be a few more instances where we'll just be looking for recipes list. This is not the case. In the recipes page, you want to take the whole thing. So therefore, I have these comments where I have recipes container. So copy everything with the comment of recipes container and then end of recipes container. That's what you're looking for. Not the main. No, that stays over here. But the recipes container, yeah, take the whole thing copy. And now, of course, I want to navigate to recipes HTML. That's my page. We keep on scrolling. And where we have the page, the main one, we simply want to dump our recipes layout. So we just paste our code over here. Let me save a recipes HTML, as well as the index one. And now in our project, if we take a look, voila, we have a recipes page done. So this is going to be our home page. And this is going to be our recipes page. And lastly, in this video, I want to work on tag template, which also is going to look very, very familiar. Because if we take a look at complete project, either the Gatsby one, or just HTML and CSS, which you'll notice that if we navigate to a tag page, what do we have over here? We have some kind of hard coded value, which of course, again, is not going to be the case in dynamic project. So this value will change based on the tag. Now, in this case, of course, that's not the case. We'll always have this beef. And then what do you see over here? It looks like a list, correct? Now, where do you think is list is coming from? Over here. So that's why we set up the CSS in such a way where it doesn't really matter where we're placing that list. We're gonna have one column layout on a small screen and then two column layout on a bigger screen. And then once we get to the big screen, it's gonna be a three column layout. And in order to set that up, we simply go and look for the tag template. Because remember, in the index HTML, or in the recipes now as well, when we're talking about those tags links, where do they navigate? Tag template, correct? So therefore, we'll look for tag template. And then again, we have the main one, the class of page. And now, of course, we just want to change it around a little bit, where we'll start by setting up a enclosing div. And we're simply doing that because I want to place the heading four on top of the rest of the content. And we're going to go with beef. So again, we're hard coding some kind of value, in this case, beef. And now what you want is grab the recipes list from the index HTML. And I'm not going to repeat this whole spiel about why we're copying pasting, because I think I already have mentioned this way too many times during the project. So we're looking for recipes list, not the container. We're looking for recipes list. Take a look at the comment and then look for the end one as well. So we're looking for end off. And in here, I probably messed it up or no. Sorry, I messed it up right now because I was looking for 
different comment. Again, we're looking for recipes list. My bad. I mixed it up with the recipes container and of recipes list. That's the endpoint. We copy this one and back in the tag template, copy and paste. And congratulations, we have three pages out of the way. So now, of course, we have the home page, we have the recipes, we have 404. And if we click on one of the tags, whether in the recipes page or in the home page, where are we going to navigate? We are going to navigate to a tag template where it will display the tag and list of recipes, which again normally would point to the recipes that are associated with that tag. And of course, you will be setting this up dynamically normally. But if we're just worried about HTML and CSS, we have three pages out of the way. And of course, we can focus on next pages. Nice. And up next, I want to work on the about page, where effectively, we'll have two column layout for the info, as well as the picture. And then here at the bottom, again, we're going to use a list. So technically, these would be some featured recipes that you want to display. Again, normally, this is going to be dynamic. And you'll just pass in which recipes you want to showcase. But in our case, we'll just use our recipes list, the same one that we used in the tag template, this one over here. Now, in this case, however, we only want to pass in three. So in the tag template, we set up four. But in this case, we'll just go with three. And effectively, we will reuse that list few more times throughout the project. And the setup is going to be exactly the same where again, I'm looking for about HTML, I have my page. So I do have the structure. And here, let's set up those recipes first. And you know, what? I'm gonna navigate here to the about page as well. So we can see right away. And once we set up those featured recipes, so the recipe list, then we'll worry about the rest of the content. And inside of the page, we want to go with a section. And then let's add about page. So this is where the info as well as the photo are going to be located. And then we want to go with another section. And then let's just call this featured recipes, recipes. And I actually don't think that there are any styles with it. But let's just add the section with this class. And then inside of it, we want to go with heading five. And we're looking for featured title. And I'm sorry, this is a class. So let's say featured title. And the only reason why I'm adding here this class is because I want to place the text in the center. And again, technically, we can use this feature recipes. But if I remember correctly, the heading five was already in the card. So that's why I just went here with this class. Again, long story short, basically, we'll set this one in the center. And then as far as the text, let's just write look at this awesome sauce. And right below it, this is where we want to place all those recipes. So let's go back to index HTML. And again, we're looking for the recipes list. Same deal. Now, in this case, of course, eventually we'll remove one of the cards, at least in my setup. But if you want, of course, you can keep all four. So we copy and paste the list. We're looking for what we were looking for about HTML, correct? Got a little bit lost over there. And then right after the heading five, so within featured recipes, we want to copy and paste. And like I said, in my case, I'll remove one of them. So I'll remove the last recipe. And once we save, of course, we right away have our nice layout. And like I previously mentioned, effectively for this one, for the heading five, I just want to place it in the center. So let's quickly go to CSS. And we're looking for featured title, I believe featured and we're looking for title and we simply want to go text align and center. So now, of course, it's going to be in the center. That's the recipes list part. Now, of course, we just want to add that info, which is going to be here in the about page. And then we also want to add a photo. So let's set that one up. And in here, we want to go with article. So this is where the info is going to be located. And then right below it, we're going to go with image. And in this case, we're looking in the assets. And then more specifically, we're looking for the about one. And then as far as the alternative, I'll just say pouring salt. And we'll also add a few more classes to the image. And those are following we will go with our IMG. So the global one, as well as about IMG. 
Now, when it comes to info, we're looking for heading to, and we'll just type some kind of text. And you know what? In this case, just so we can speed this one up, look for this project or the other one, and basically just copy and paste the text. There's really no point to retype that from the scratch. And essentially, I got this text, I believe, from the hipster Epsom, which is my favorite place to get Laura Epsom text, effectively the dummy text. And then we want to go here with the first paragraph. So there will be two paragraphs. And I'm just getting the text over here. If you want, you can simply type lorem and then whatever amount of characters. So you can go here with lorem and then let's say 20 or 10 or whatever. Now, in my case, since I like that text better, I'm just going to copy and paste. So that's my first paragraph. And then, of course, we're looking for the second one. And then at the very, very, very bottom, we we'll also have the button. So let's say here button the class will be BTN. And then we want or you not actually it's going to be a link. My bad. So let me remove my apologies. We're going to go with link. And this is going to be to contact HTML. And then we want to add the class of BTN. And let's add a contact. And since we have already global class for the BTN, that's why we have the look. And now, of course, we want to swing back to main CSS. And we just want to apply a few styles to about page. And I'm just going to keep this one in the bottom. Because I like to keep things organized that way. But of course, you can leave it at the top as well. And we're going to go with about page, we're looking for the heading two. So that's that main heading with that dummy text. So about page heading two, and in here, we'll say text transform. And we'll set it equal to none. So there's no transformation because for all the headings, we have that base transformation. Then as far as the font size, I'll go with bold. So I'll make it a little bit bolder. And then in here, let's also set up about page. So now, of course, I'm talking about that section. And first, I want to go with display grid, display grid. And again, by default, it's going to be that one column layout. But that doesn't stop me from setting up the gap, correct? So again, I have two REMs and then four REMs. So this one, of course, is going to be for my row. And then this one will be for my columns. And again, at the moment we have one column, so it doesn't really matter. And then we also want to set up right away some kind of padding here. And let's go with padding bottom three REMs. So that's going to be added to this entire thing. So now, of course, we have distance between the section, the about page and our featured recipes. And then we also want to target right away the image. And as far as the about image, well, we have the class, correct? So let's go with about hyphen IMG. And we're looking for border radius. And we use our CSS variable for that. And as far as the height, well, let's set it up as 300 pixels. Now, of course, the height is a little bit smaller. And then we also want to, of course, go with some kind of media query because on a bigger screen, we'll have a two column layout. So let's set up a media screen. And as far as the size, let's go with and and min width. And in my case, again, I went with 992. That was just my preference. And we'll target the about page. We'll set up grid template columns, grid template columns as one fraction and one fraction. So we have two column layout. And then when it comes to rows, I'm going to go with 400 pixels. Now keep something in mind where of course we'll have only one row. And essentially what I'm doing, I'm setting up the height for my row. And then I'll use the height for the image and I'll set it equal to 100%. So effectively, as a result, my image is going to be the height of my row. So let's try it out over here. We'll say grid template rows. And we're looking for that 400 pixels. And then of course, in here, we'll go with align items, and we're placing it in the center. And I'll comment this one out in a second, just so I can see why we're adding that one. And let's go with our about IMG. And then in here, we'll go with height. And like I said, we're going to go with 100%. So now what happens on a small screen, we'll have this look. So once I make my screen size smaller, it's going to look something like this. And then once we get to 992, we have this two column layout, and then image is the height of my row. And since text is smaller, now, of course, we're placing it in the center. 
Now, if I'll comment this one out, you'll notice that text is all the way at the top. So let me put it back in there. And now, of course, we have the about page completed as well. All right. And as far as the next step, we want to go to contact page and, of course, style this sucker. Effectively, here we have the same featured recipes. So we already know where to get them At the moment. We have them already in the about. And then when it comes to form, I mean, most of it is already in a global CSS. So we should be done with this in no time. Now, at the moment, of course, in the contact, this is all I have a text with contact page. And of course, we'll start in the contact HTML. That's what we're looking for. And like I said, since I want to simplify this first, we'll go to about HTML. And we're looking for those featured recipes. So take this section, the featured one, and then just copy and paste and place it in the contact page. So take all of this code, navigate back to contact HTML. And in here, we'll have two sections. One is going to be for that info, as well as the form. So now let me close the sidebar. So let's start with that section. Let's set up a section with a class of contact and then hyphen container. And then right after it, we'll copy and paste our featured ones. So this is what you should see on a screen, the featured recipes. And of course, we just need to navigate up where we have the actual container, the contact one. And as far as the HTML, I mean, there's not much. There's some headings, some paragraphs, and like I keep saying, form as well. And we'll start with an article. So the article is going to have some kind of class. And we're going to go with contact info in this case. And then as far as the text, again, I'm just going to speed this up. And I'm just going to copy and paste from the final one. So we're looking for heading three, copy and paste. And the same goes for these three paragraphs. That's it. That's all we have to do. Come up with a paragraph and then copy and paste. And the same goes for the rest of the two. So another paragraph here and another set of text. If you don't like my text, of course, you can always go with lorem. Third paragraph. And then again, we copy and paste the text. And then right next to this article, we'll place another one. And this is where we'll place our form. And effectively, we're looking for form class as well as the contact form. So this is where we'll add a little bit more styling. And this is what you should see on the screen. Now, I will remove the action because, of course, it's not going to be dynamic. It's not going to be a working form. And then inside of it, we're going to go with form row. And then I want to add the label as well as the input. So we go here with label. And as far as the four attribute, we'll go here with name. And we'll also add a class of form hyphen label. Again, this is coming from global CSS. And then we'll just add your name. Then we'll save it. And after that, I'm going to go with input. The type will be text. And let's just set up a name is equal to name. And then we want to go with ID as well as the class of form input. So let's set it up over here. Let's say ID and we'll set that one equal to name. So just make sure that both attributes, the ID and four, have the same value. And then we'll also look for the class and that will be form input. And once I have my first row, essentially what we want to do is just add a comment and we'll say single form row. And I'll also add it over here at the end of my div. And I'll say end of single row. And now, of course, we just want to copy and paste, I believe, two more times. And I mean, this is going to be the text area, so maybe only once. So let's take this one, copy and paste. And as far as the values, essentially everywhere where we have the name, we want to change it around to a email. So let me select all of the names over here. I'll go for email. And the only one that I need to change back, of course, is this one. So say name is also equal to an email. So if I take a look, yep, there it is. Now, of course, we still need to add some CSS, but at least the basic setup is working. And then, like I said, we'll also add a text area. So let me keep on scrolling here. And after this row, we'll set up another one. And the class is exactly the same. So we'll go here with form row. And then inside of it, 
again, another label. In this case, we're looking for message and class will still be a form hyphen label. And as far as the text, let's just write message. And this is where we want to go with that text area. So right after this label, we'll go with text area. And as far as the attribute values, let's set up both name and ID equal to a message. And then I'll remove the columns and rows because of course we have already all the styling in the global CSS. So go with form and we're looking for the class of text area. And once we save, we only need to add a button. So right after this div, we'll go with button. Now, in this case, it's going to be type submit. And then as far as the styling, we'll go with BTN and BTN hyphen block. So now, of course, the button is going to be spanning all across our form. And then as far as the text, let's just go with submit. And once we have all of this in place, essentially, we just want to navigate to main CSS. So let me open up the file. I'm looking for CSS. I'm looking for main CSS. I have the about. I think I need to copy the comment as well. Copy and paste. And of course, now I'm looking for the contact page as far as the value. Contact page. And I'll close the sidebar here. And what I want to do is set up that form to be 100%. Because remember, by default, we have some value already on the form class. And that's why we added that contact form class. And in here, let's just say with to be 100%. And as far as the margin, I'm going to go with zero. Now, don't worry, of course, we'll use the container, the contact container to set them up side by side. And in fact, it will do that right now, where we want to go back to the main CSS, we want to look for contact, and then hyphen container. And in here we'll go with display grid. Now again, on the small screen, by default, it's going to be a one column layout, but that doesn't stop us from setting up the properties for the gap. So two REMs and three REMs over here for the column, and then I'll also add a padding to the bottom. And in my case, I'm going to go with three REMs. So that's going to be the distance in between these guys. And once we have all of this in place, now, of course, we just want to worry about the media. And we'll go with media screen. And as far as the min width, well, let's just set it up as 992. So min width 992 and pixels, of course. And in here, let's just go with contact container. And I'm going to be looking for grid template columns. And in this case, I'm going to go with one fraction. So that's for the text. That's for the left column over here. And then as far as the form, I'm actually going to hard code. I'm going to say 450 pixels. And then since I want text in the center, again, I'm going to go with that align items and center. So let's go back over here, align items, and we'll set it equal to center. And of course, once we have added the CSS, we're done with the contact form. And now we can focus on our next task. And once we have the contact form in place, now, of course, let's set up the tags page the moment has only a heading one. And what we're shooting for is this look where we have the tags, of course, these are going to be dynamic in normal project, but in our case, we'll just hard code. And then once you click on a tag, then you navigate to that tag template page. And of course, this page we already have, that's why we have all the recipes in place. And as far as the setup, well, in here, let me go back to the tags. And I'll do the same here. And of course, I'm already in the page. So I'm good. And we're looking for tags HTML. We'll close the sidebar for now. We want to remove that heading one, we'll still keep the page. And what we're looking for is the section. And I'm going to go with tags wrapper. So that's the class in here. Let's add a comments. So single, and then tag and in this case, it's going to be end of single tag. So end of single tag. And then as far as the setup, it's going to be a link class will be a tag. And again, we'll hard code these values. And I'm not going to go over why we're hard coding the values, because I believe I have said that already more than enough times during this project. And where you want this link to navigate? Well, to the tag template. Remember, that represents some specific tag and recipes that have that tag. 
And as far as the proper path, well, it is tag template HTML, correct? Like I said, we'll add a class over here and I'll say tag. And as far as the values, let's just go with heading five and we'll set it equal to beef. And as far as the amount of recipes, well, it's going to be a paragraph with one recipe. And now what do we want to do is just to take this one tag, copy and paste. And let me take a look how many I created. I think I went with five. So let me see. Okay. At the moment, I have one, two, three, four. So let me copy that one more time. And now we just want to change these values where again, this is going to have two recipes. Then we have dinner, food, and all that. So let me scroll up. Let me make sure that I don't do anything with the first one. Okay, that one stays the same. For the second one, we're looking for breakfast. It's gonna have two recipes. Then we have one for carrots. And that is going to have, I believe, three recipes. Then we have dinner and food with one recipe. So dinner with four recipes, and then food with one. And once the HTML is in place now, of course, let's just navigate to main CSS. And we want to set up another new comment in here. So we'll go here with tags, of course. And this one will have a little bit more CSS than the contact page. Because of course, with the contact page, the biggest one was the form, but we already had a bunch of styles in a global CSS. So let's go here with tags page. And then I'm going to worry about my wrapper. And again, it's going to be a one column layout starting with the small screen. And then as the screen size increases, then we'll also change the amount of columns. But that doesn't stop us from tags wrapper. So that's the entire wrapper. Then we go with display grid. And then I'm going to go with two REM. So that's going to be four columns and rows. And then adding the same deal. We'll go with padding bottom three REMs. And once we have all of this in place, now, of course, we just want to worry about that one single tag. And the way we'll set up the CSS is going to be following where we'll target the tag and we're looking for background. And in this case, I'm going to go with gray and 500. So that's going to be the default value. Then I also want to add right away a border radius. And of course, we'll use our CSS variable for that. After that, we want to go with text align center. So we'll make sure that the text is in the center color white I think that should look good. And then as far as transition, well, let's just use our CSS variable because when we'll hover, I'll change this color. And then we're pretty much done. I just want to set up the padding top bottom 0.75 REMs and left and right zero as I'm hovering over the tag. Like I said, I want to change it to a primary color. So let's just grab the background one and place it over here. And instead of gray 500, we'll go with primary 500. Let's save that one. Notice as we're hovering. Now, of course, we're changing the color. And we just want to add some margins zero to the bottom of heading five and a paragraph. Because if you remember, by default, we have them there. So now, of course, we'll remove those margins. And I want to do for both for tag paragraph as well as the heading. So therefore, we'll go with tag paragraph, tag heading. And then, like I said, we're going to go with margin bottom zero. So both of them have no margin there. Also, I want to increase the font weight for the heading. So let's set up the heading here. And we're going to go with font weight. And let's just set it up as 600. Let's save. And as you can see, now, of course, the font weight is a little bit bolder. And lastly, we'll have two column layouts starting with 576 and then a three column layout once we get to 992. And since I want to save a little bit of time on a boilerplate, we'll just copy and paste. We'll set it up over here, 576. We're targeting a tags wrapper, of course. So the class is tags and wrapper. And since we already have display grid, we're just going to go with grid template columns, one fraction and one fraction. And now, of course, the only thing that's left to do is to take this copy and paste 992. And then we'll have three column layout. And 
just because some people probably are annoyed, I'm gonna go with repeat and let's just say three one fraction. So, of course, that is the alternative syntax that we can use. And now, let me navigate to the big screen I'm looking for tags. That's gonna be my layout. And once I click on a tag, I navigate to a tag template page. And with this in place, we really need to worry about that single recipe page with this one over here. And don't freak out about this error page. Essentially, when I was setting up the structure for all the pages, I just forgot to change it to a single recipe. If you take a look at the title, of course, it says single recipe. And as far as the single recipe page, kind of looks something like this. We're back in home. We'll just click on one of the recipes. Again, we're hard coding these values. This is going to be four banana pancakes. And at the top, we have some kind of info. And then we have instructions, ingredients, and tools. And in order to make it easier, again, we'll separate these two. Where in the first video, we'll worry about the info section. And then we'll deal with instructions, ingredients, and all that. And we'll start by navigating to single recipe, of course. And in here, first, I want to remove that heading one. We're not going to use that anymore. And the layout is going to be following. Where again, we have the page. So this is where we'll place all of our content. And inside of the recipe page, there are going to be two sections. One is going to be a recipe hero. So section with the class of recipe and hyphen hero. And then the second one will be the recipe content. So that's where the instructions, tools, and all that is going to go in. So we're going to go here with recipe content. And this is the one that we'll work on in the next video. And in this video, we'll focus on this one. We'll start by placing some kind of image. Like I said, we are hard coding this. So we simply need to look for the assets and then more specifically image we want. And in my case, since I'm going with banana pancakes, I'm going to go with recipe number five. I do want to add some classes here. So we'll start with our image class. There's also going to be a recipe hyphen hero and hyphen IMG. As far as the alternative, let's just say pancakes. Once we say we should see the image, which is always a good sign right next to the image, we'll have that second layout. And this is going to be the article. And inside of the article, we'll start with heading two. And let's just write the name. So banana pancakes. And after that, we want to set up some kind of dummy text. And in this case, I'm going to go with paragraph. And of course, like I did before, I'm just going to grab my hipster text, copy and paste. Okay, I have my text. Awesome. And then we'll have a recipe icons. So of course, we're talking about this column over here. And the same goes for tags. And I guess more properly, this is a row with a three column layout, where of course, we have the icons. And then here we have another row where we display the tags. So let's keep scrolling. And as far as the recipe icons, well, we want to go with div. And instead of div, we'll set up some articles. Again, we're not placing in the recipe content. So let's just add here a comment a recipe content. So we're clear where we're setting this up. So we want to look for recipe hero. And then right after the paragraph, we'll go with div. And let's just say recipe icons. We'll copy and paste. And of course, at the moment I'm just setting up the comment, but eventually the div is going to be there. And the second one will be recipe tags. And this is very useful once you start troubleshooting. Trust me, adding these comments seems like a silly idea, but once in a while, it really helps you out. And then we'll look for div, like I said, we'll be looking for recipe icons. Inside of it, we're going to go with one article, and that's going to be a single recipe icon. As far as the setup, well, we just need to look for the icon. And therefore, I'll go for I element. The classes are following FAS and FA clock. And then let's just add some kind of dummy text. And that's going to be placed in the heading five. We'll say prep time. And also we'll have a paragraph with some kind of hard coded value. In this case, that's going to be 30 minutes. And now, of course, I just want to take this article, copy and paste and change some values around where the second one will be F A R. So not F A S F A R. It's not going to be a prep time. It's going to be a cook time. 
and here I'm just gonna go with 15 minutes. And then lastly, we have the user friends. So that's the name of the icon. We're looking for F A S F A. Then let's remove this piece and let's say user friends. And this is just going to be amount of servings, so servings. And we're looking for some kind of value again. So in this case, I'm going to go with six servings. And lastly, we want to set up those tags. So again, make sure that you don't place this in the recipe icons. Make sure that you place here in the recipe tags. So div with the class of recipe tags. And then as far as the content here, we'll go with tags. So that's the text. And this is going to be a link. Now again, we're navigating to a tag template page. Therefore, in my href, I'll type tag template and HTML. And we just want to set up some dummy values. So beef, save it. And now you want to take the link. So don't take the tags. Take just the link. I think I'm going to copy and paste this, I don't know, two more times. So three total. Let me close the sidebar. We just want to change these values around. Second one will be breakfast. Third one will be pancakes. And the fourth one will be food. Once we have the HTML for the hero in place. Now, of course, let's just navigate to main CSS. We're looking for the last thing. Pretty much all the way in the bottom, we'll have our recipe template. So let's take this comment, copy and paste. And let's just say recipe and template or single recipe. You know what? Actually, I'm going to go with single recipe, single recipe page. And we want to start with that recipe hero. So recipe hero. And by default, it's going to be a one column layout. And we'll right away set it up as display grid. We should be already familiar with that. And I'll right away also set up the gap to be three RMs. And once I have this in place, now I want to focus on that image. And remember, the class was a recipe hero IMG. So recipe hero hero IMG. And basically, I want to go with height to be 300 pixels. So now it's a little bit bigger. And as far as the bore radius, well, we have the property for that. We have bore radius property. And when it comes to the paragraph, this one over here, I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter as far as gray color. So therefore, I'll go with recipe info. And then I'm looking for paragraph. And of course, we want to go with color. And I'm looking for gray. And I'm going to go with 600. So now it's a little bit lighter. Then we can start focusing on those icons. So that's the next row. And as far as the setup there, we'll go with recipe icons. And then I'm looking for display grid. So I want to set it up as a grid layout. And right from the get go, it's going to be a three column layout. So go over here with grid template columns. And in this case, I'm going to go to repeat. And as far as the value, I'll repeat three times and one fraction. So right from the get go, we have a three column layout. And again, I've massively zoomed in. So of course, normally, it's going to look something like this. And then once we have all of this in place, now let's add a little bit of gap. And in my case, I'm going to go with one REM. And we do want to add a margin top bottom. And therefore, I'm going to go with two REMs and zero. So nothing on left and right. And when it comes to the text align, I want to place it in the center. So let's set up here text align and center. Then we want to focus on the icon. And we can access that by recipe icons. So recipe hyphen icons. And I'm looking for I element. And here I'm going to go with font size. 1.5 REMs. And as far as the color, let's just go with primary. So color, and we're going to be looking for our primary one. And I believe I'm going to go with 500. Then we want to target the heading five as well as the paragraph. And in this case, I think it's going to be faster if I just copy and paste. So we're looking for the heading five. And we're also looking for the paragraph. And we just want to set up the margin bottom to be equal to zero. And then font size to be 0 0.85 REMs. Let's save that one. And lastly, I want to target this recipe icons paragraph and just add a different color. And in this case, I'm going to go for gray. And again, I'm looking for that 600 value. 
So let's go here and let's say 600. So that's going to be the color for that paragraph. And then we just really need to worry about those tags as well as the two column layout once we get to the big screen. And in order to style the tags, we'll start with the actual container and we'll set it up as display flex. So right from the get go, it's going to be display flex. And then we'll align them in the center vertically. So align item center, then we'll make sure that it wraps if the screen size is not big enough. So flex wrap equal to wrap. And then as far as the font size, I'm going to go with 0 0.7. And this is the interesting part where I'm going to be looking for EM values. So basically, depending on my container. And I also want to add the font weight. And in this case, it's going to be equal to 600. So the font weight, of course, is going to be a little bit bigger. And then let's target those links. So of course, I'm not talking about that text, I'm talking about the link. So recipe tags, and we're looking for a element and background will be equal to the primary 500. So primary hyphen hyphen primary 500. Then as far as the border radius, or not border bottom, sorry, border radius, that's going to be equal to a border radius CSS variable. Then we want to set up some kind of color that's going to be equal to white. And then as far as the padding top is actually going to be quite small. So 0 0.05 REMs. And as far as left and right, we're going to go with 0 0.5 REMs. And then we also want to add a little bit of margin. We're not going to go with top bottom. So that's why it's going to be zero. But left and right is going to be 0 0.25 REMs. Then we want to go with text transform and we'll capitalize. So text transform and capitalize. And lastly, like I said, we want to worry about that two column layout once we get to the big screen. And since I'm lazy typing the media queries, let me just select this code, copy and paste. And we just need to change some values around where the men with still will be 992. So that stays the same. But in here, we want to go to a recipe hyphen hero. And once we get to the big screen, I just want to change it to two column layout. And as far as the image is going to be four fractions. And when it comes to the text, as well as the icons and all that, it's going to be five fractions. And again, since I want both of them to be in center, we're just going to go with align items in center since the height for one of them probably is going to be bigger. And if we go to the big screen, notice now in this case, the image is the one that it's smaller on a big screen. Therefore, it's sitting right in the center. So that's the look that we have for the hero. Beautiful. Congrats. We have finally arrived at the last step. And essentially in here, we want to set up the instructions, ingredients and tools. But before we do that, there's actually a tiny typo here where notice the recipe info. It's not recipe info should be recipe hero. Now, of course, my text is gray. And essentially, I'm looking here for 600. And now everything is just like in the final project. And we'll start in a single recipe. And you know what, in this case, I'll collapse the hero, just so it's not in a way. And we're looking for recipe content. That's the one we want to set up. And here we'll have two column layout. Therefore, inside of the section first, I want to set up that article. And then there's going to be another article. And since I was lazy, as far as the class names, I just set it up as second column. That's it. So in here in the second column, this is where we'll place the ingredients and the tools. But first, we'll worry about the instructions. So instructions, of course, are going to go in our first column. And I want to start with heading four. And we'll just say instructions. Then we'll set up a single instruction comment. And after that, let's go with div with the same class. So single and instruction. Now inside of the div, if you take a look at the complete project, you'll notice this step and then the horizontal line. So that's going to be in our header. And then we'll have some kind of text. So let me start by getting this text here, just because I want to speed this up. So first, I'm going to set up the paragraph, but above the paragraph, there's going to be a header. And inside of it, we'll have another paragraph. And I'm going to go with step one. And then right next to it, 
we want to place a empty div. And yes, this div needs to be here. Now, there's a million different ways how we can set it up. But in this case, I just went with extra HTML element. And once I have this single instruction, I just want to copy and paste. And let me take a look. I believe I have three. So let me just copy and paste one, two. Then we want to change the step. And this is going to be two. This is going to be three. And just to stay consistent, I'll also take this text and add in step number two. And then the same thing for step number three. Of course, you can keep all of them the same. It doesn't really matter. Let me save it. Okay, so I have step one, two, and three. And then inside of the second column, this is where we want to set up the ingredients. And we also want to go with tools. Now, both of them are going to be in separate divs. So let's go with div inside of it. We're going to go with heading four and ingredients. Hopefully I can spell it correctly because that's usually an issue. And we're just looking for paragraph and we'll add a class of single ingredient. And then as far as the value again, yes, I know that it's probably annoying to some people, but we'll just copy and paste since I don't see the point of setting up everything from the scratch. And uh, what you want to do is just take this paragraph. So not the heading for just a paragraph with the same class. And you probably want to copy and paste, at least in my case, I'm going to copy and paste this two times. And we just want to change these values around. So we want to select this one. And we want to do the same thing for the third one as well. And then the same goes for the tools. But of course, the difference is the class name, as well as the text. So we can copy and paste or we can set up everything from scratch. In this case, I think I'm going to go with setting up everything from scratch. So div, then heading for tools. And then let's go with paragraph. And let's add that class here. So class, and we're looking for single tool. And as far as the value, again, let's just take these ones, copy and paste. Once I have the first tool, I'm just going to copy and paste and essentially get those values. Once I have the HTML, now let's navigate to main CSS. And let's continue over here. First, we'll worry about the recipe content. So now, of course, I'm talking about the container, where both the instructions and ingredients and tools are sitting because we'll have two column layout. So let's go here with a recipe, recipe hyphen content. And we're going to be looking for the padding top bottom three REMs and then left and right zero. Then we want to go with display grid. So that's, of course, our small screen layout. And we'll set it up as gap two REMs for the rows and five REMs for the columns. But of course, we only have the rows on a small screen. And then let's go with a media query. And if you want, of course, you can add it here as well. Just make sure that you move this media query below the recipe content. Otherwise, there's going to be a mess up. You know what? In my case, just to stay consistent. I'm just going to copy and paste. And we're looking for recipe content. I want to go with grid template columns. And as far as the values, we'll go with two fractions. So that's for the first column. That's for instructions. And then one fraction for the other value. So now if we go to the big screen, check it out. We have the instructions as well as ingredients and tools in the second column. And then slowly but surely, let's start working on those instructions. So we're looking for single instruction. And then first, I want to go with header. And this is going to be a display grid. So now, of course, I'm dealing with this step and the horizontal line that we cannot see yet. As far as the setup is going to be grid template columns, we're looking for auto one fraction. So the step will have its height, or I'm sorry, its width. And then the horizontal line is going to take up the rest. I also want to add a little bit of gap. And here I'm going to go with 1.5 REMs. And since I want that horizontal line in the center, we're going to go with align items and center. Let's save it. The reason why we don't see anything is because we haven't styled that horizontal line. So why don't we do that first? Let's go with single instruction. Then we're looking for the header and then more specifically a div. And here let's go with height two pixels and background will be a gray one. And I think I'm going to go with that 300. We have our single recipe. 
that's good. And we also have that horizontal line. Now, there's still some things we need to add. Don't worry about it. As long as you can see this horizontal line, that means that we are moving in the right direction. Now I'm going to hop back to the header and more specifically the paragraph. So we're looking for single instruction. Then we're looking for the header. And instead of the div, we're looking for the paragraph. And in this case, I want to go with text transform and we'll set it up as uppercase. So now, of course, we're dealing with that step one, two and three. Then let's go with font weight and we'll set it up as 600. OK, and let's add right away a margin bottom to be zero. So margin bottom zero. And I also want to change the color and we'll set it up as primary 500. And once we save, everything works. And lastly, when it comes to the instruction, so this one over here, I want to set up a different gray tone. And in order to target that, since I don't want to select this paragraph over here, I'm just going to say single, single instruction, then header, and then I'm just targeting the paragraph. And you know what? I actually need to remove this header. My bad. So basically, I'm looking for the entire paragraph. Therefore, I'll go with single instruction and only the direct child of that instruction, which is a paragraph, will have that color and gray. So we'll go here with color and we're looking for gray. And I think I'm going to go with 700. So now, of course, this one is a little bit lighter. If you don't believe me, you can actually set this up as 300 and you'll clearly see that I'm targeting the correct paragraph. Then we want to style the second column. So let's keep moving. We'll say second column. And in this case, there's not much to it. We'll say display grid. We're looking for grid in this case. Now I do want to add a row gap and that's going to be equal to two REMs. So that's the distance in between. And now let's just target the single ingredient as well as single tool. Now, when it comes to single ingredient, so let me again make sure that I spell this correctly. I'm looking for border bottom. So border bottom, and that's going to be two pixels solid. And we're looking for the gray one. So let's set up here var. And then we're looking for gray and then 300. That's going to be the border. I also want to add a little bit of padding in the bottom. Padding bottom 0.75 REMs. And then as far as the color, I'm going to go with that gray 700. And then the same goes for single tool. So single tool in here will go with the same border. So copy and paste. And the same goes for padding. So pretty much the same stuff. Just the colors are going to be different where I'm going to go to color and I'm looking for my primary 500. And then as far as text, I just want to capitalize. So text transform and we'll set it up as capitalized. And once all of this is in place, we're done with the project. Congratulations. And I hope to see you in the next one.